In the mid-2000s, Division Three men's basketball belonged to these two programs. One of them will return to the national championship game coming up tomorrow. And as it stands right now, it would be Wisconsin Stevens' point, a big reason why the work of Stephen Pelkoffer. Yeah, Pelkoffer is certainly shooting well this second half. Buried that three on Montgomery to help kind of just keep the Marlins at bay at this point in time. Montgomery has it for the Marlins. What a oh. spin and a score. Oh, he got a little caught under the basket and had to kind of adjust his shot. Did a terrific job as the Marlins pull out the full court press here and the pointers are having a big trouble. They wanted a backcourt wow. violation. Good call, non-call, because he didn't have all three points. Ball both feet over the line. His left foot didn't quite cross. It and was And the close. ball certainly hadn't gotten there yeah. either. And you've got to have all three over before one of them can't come back. Already oh, no. just 10 seconds on the shot clock. Joe Ritchie drives in, left alone for a moment, but he's a bit short. Yeah, he didn't He didn't want to call, and I thought Owens did a nice job of just standing in place. But Rich, Rich, if he had figured out he was alone, he would have had an easy shot. Lions uh -oh. another trigger, and he's a bit short. They're going to get a loose ball foul yeah, inside. Richard, he held on to Poe's arm. Richard knows he got, he, he tried to get away with it and the ref came up pointing at him. He had that smirk like, yeah, that was me. By the way, quickly back to those banners. The one just off to the side of Virginia Wesleyans was Amherst, yep. who ended a possible back-to-back, uh, uh, -back, two teams winning back-to-back -back championships. Richard's third foul. It's the tenth on the pointers. Thus, two shots for Poe, who can't connect on the first. He is a 47% shooter. Yeah, he's he's not comfortable at the line. And you can tell. I mean, he takes his time. He's he's thinking about it. There's nothing natural for him at the line, but he certainly took less time that time and buried it. Pressure a bit more lax this time from the Marlins. I think they want to maybe turn it on, turn it off, kind of catch the pointers off guard. And sometimes off a free throw, a lot of coaches will turn off that press. They'd rather do it off a made basket. Still time for the Marlins, but they need stops. Winner will play Augustana coming up tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Eight on the timer. Richie got free, but he can't connect on the layup. Marlins want to push. Montgomery to the oh. rack, and he misses the one-handed jam. And it goes back to the pointers. What a turn of events for Montgomery. And Montgomery bends over in, in frustration. That was an excellent opportunity, but he was just too far from the rim. The pressure almost caused a turnover. Looked like it was last touched by Cam Owens. Do you like to have a player in your lap? Because that nearly happened too. Holy Six, cow. 6'5", 195, Barrel and Adams. He would have had the advantage. You think? Yeah. We we can't move. <laughs> Another dangerous pass from Wisconsin Stevens point. They're, they're in a little Almost bit of disarray. Almost a travel here. too. Yeah. And Macedo wanted it. And a rip a away. Corey Moore. A lot of contact, but no call. And the pointers emerge with the basketball. And now a call on Owens, and now the Marlins fans are losing their minds. I, Owens discussing it with the referee. Stay composed here. I'm not, I'm not sure if there was necessarily a foul on the Corey Moore considering what refs have been calling and not calling all game. Dave Macedo's certainly got his money's worth over the last few minutes. There wasn't a whole no, lot of contact no, there, though. No, that was, that was more Corey Moore just trying to get a call out of that one. And in that case, I think Owens has to foul. It sounds crazy, but you don't want to let them get into the front court yep. and bleed the clock. And it was his fifth, thus the brief stoppage. Owens will have to come out, finishes with six points and a board and assist. He was just two of seven from the field tonight. Take a moment to say, I'd like to see this rule change. I don't think there needs to be time when there's a fifth foul. You know there's a fifth foul. Everybody on that bench knows there's a fifth foul. They know who's got four out there. You got to get rid of this extra timeout. So Austin Riff will go to the free throw line, one of three pointers in double figures. Wisconsin Stevens point 10 of 12 there tonight. Make it 11 of 13. 
Marlins are going to have to hit a couple big shots and quickly. Otherwise, pointers are going to be 7 and 0 in Salem and marching on to try and win their fourth straight championship when they're in this building. Making sure I classified that. Alex Richard out. Sean McGann in. It's back to a nine point pointers advantage. And should they win tomorrow, by the way, that'd be three Wisconsin championships in the last four years. Corey Moore trying to do something about that here. Bullet pass inside. Oh, boy, almost an and one. That would have been just what the doctor ordered for the Marlins, but Poe can't finish. You know, I, I see it a lot these days. Guys don't go up with the hand you're supposed to go up with. He went up with the right hand, exposes the ball to the defender who can then tip it and, and keep it from going in. Go up with the left. It's still going to be a call, but it doesn't allow the defender a chance at the ball. Poe just 47% from the line. He is 3 of 4 today, but misses on that one. Dave Macedo still patrolling the sideline. And this time after the free throw, full court pressure. Oh, That's simply because they've there's got not a no whole lot choice. of time left. Yeah, they've got no choice here. Defense Going to a small, fast switch. lineup here. Yep. Alex Richard in, Sean McGann out. You'll see that a lot seesawing down the stretch. Final minute plus. Of course, Poe's got th four fouls out there. She's nearly cost it up again. Don't want to be in that sp spot. This is a must stop, or actually they will foul after the pressure was broken. Yeah, so they've let about the 15 seconds off the clock there. In an eight point game, you need try to stop the clock as much as possible and preserve that ever precious time. Pretty much not talked about this man in the second half. He missed his first two three-pointers back iron. And being the smart player that he is, turned off his offense to make sure it's the rest of his team. Instead of, you know, hurting them from the field, he felt he was off, so he turned it back to his teammates. Case in point. Pointers have four men with nine or more points. That's their game, and they're up by ten here. And they're smart enough to know who's who's good at any moment on the court. Can't waste time here. Desperation three is off the mark, and it's Ooh. last touch by Stephen Pelkoffer. Greg Montgomery was right there, too. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought that went off of Montgomery, especially the way he brought his hands down. Ooh, not me. Montgomery has it. Good and job. That'll be two shots coming up. Good job of just changing pace there and getting the defender back on his heels. Montgomery, who's a T or who's a 67% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Have to make both of these if the Marlins want to stay in this. One of the top offensive rebounding players in the NCAA, by the way. As McGann will check out back into the game has been, I think, probably the the story for the pointers today in, in Richard. It's been phenomenal. Poe had a chance at the board, gets another opportunity and lays it home. Fortunate bounce for the Marlins, and it turned out to be a three-point trip. Not a whole lot of time expired there. Yeah, Montgomery, when he let go of it, it felt it looked short. It ended up short, hit Poe, then went back to Montgomery, went back to Poe, who caught the defense who didn't think they were going to be on defense at that moment, not knowing where the ball was, was able to slice the lane and put in the layup. So now it's a seven-point deficit with 40 seconds left. That's a big swing. Do you try to pressure, or do you immediately foul if you're Virginia I think you got to pressure. Uh, and Marlins can do it well. They've been close a you, few times today. You only today. will lose max 10 seconds if you can get them into a backcourt violation, leaving 30 seconds on the clock. I don't think you do anything but pressure. But the moment they get it across midcourt, you got a foul. Take it, try and go for the steal. That's what you're trying to do here. With the way that the Marlins have defended on this side of the floor, it's worth the 10 second yes, risk. It's absolutely worth it. Uh, apparently not, is more than bailed them out. I think maybe Riff they felt. had pretty much emerged, and I think that was a smart play by Corey Probably. Moore there, because he had the lane. Well, oh, Coach Macedo seems to disagree, as he kind of had a look at Moore like. What are you doing? That wasn't the plan. But instead of 10 seconds coming off the clock, just about four came off the clock. But it puts Rift to the line where he sank the last two. Maybe extend this to a three-point or three full three-possession game. 
perfect seven of seven at the line for Riff. Leads all scores with 20. And that offense defense switch continues to ebb and flow. And Sean McGann comes in. Riff, one of the second best free throw shooter on the team by a couple tenths, well, by a tenth of a point. Tim Jones has it for the Marlins. Moore wow. lost the handle. Riff has it. Pointers in control, and they need to foul. I think that might do it. I think the Marlins realize there's just nothing they can do at nine points. Wisconsin Stevens point. Now 7-0 and oh in either the Final Four or the National Championship game. They can become the fourth team in Division Three men's hoops to win their fourth title tomorrow against Augustana at 3 o'clock. 68-59 the final score. Two giants at this level of college basketball duked out in a doozy. And it's Wisconsin Stevens Point emerging on top. One whale of a contest. Absolutely terrific. Lived up right to the billing. You knew this was going to be a defensive struggle. The score would indicate that. Both Stevens Point basically played their average and kept Virginia Wesleyan below their average. And both teams threw out a few different X's and O's to try and mess their team up. I know Augustana watched that game and thought to themselves, we've got a challenge ahead of us, but that's a good Augustana defense team, defensive team coming in as well. I can't wait for tomorrow's chance, championship. It'll be a lot of fun. Dave McHugh will break it down more on his postgame show on D3Hoops.com. We'll have the recap on NCAA.com. The All-Star Game, the Reese's All-Star Game coming up at 12.30 tomorrow, then the National Championship. Augustana and Wisconsin Stevens Point should be a doozy between the Vikings and the Point. For Dave McHugh, I'm Brian Bush. Thanks to our entire crew here from Salem. Can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. Augustana, Wisconsin Stevens Point will fight for the national championship in Division Three men's basketball. Thanks so much for watching.